So about 12 months ago, I was sent my first ever 3D printer by Elegoo. And I've been through love, hate, and all the learning curve that goes with 3D printing. So I thought it'd be good to paint a picture of what it's actually like 3D printing, what I've learnt, what I hate, what I like. And they've just sent me out the brand new Saturn. And I am pretty shocked at the technology advancements in just the 12 months it's been. I absolutely love 3D printing now. The smaller machines did learn me a lot. The one thing that I will say is a good learning curve is having errors. It makes you learn the machines a lot better. Now, I don't like using the internet to help. It's good to point you in a direction, but don't take people's word as gospel. Learning to look for the errors yourself and sort of understanding how the printers work helps a lot better. I only turn to the internet if I'm really unsure. But the biggest thing that's when starting out is making sure your bed is totally level. Now, I really like the Elegoo bed leveling system. I don't know whether it's because it's the first printer I got and I'm really used to doing it, but it's just two Allen bolts and you hold it and tighten it up. However, I couldn't get this printer level. And because of previous problems with the Mono X from Anycubic, I realized to check the bed and it was warped. To have two printers and have two warp beds means I'm very unlucky. However, if you are thinking about buying a printer, do deal with companies like Elegoo, Anycubic and Nova 3D because the customer service has been brilliant. And if I have had a problem, I've been sent a new replacement part within a week, which is pretty impressive to say it's coming from China. And I'm saying this from previous experience because you will have seen me use about seven printers over the course of my career on YouTube. And there's a few printers I've used where I've had issues and I've just not had the problem source, sorted. I've not been able to get in contact with the suppliers or anything. It's been an absolute pain. So stick to the brands and the names that you know. And that way, if you do have a problem, you know you're going to get looked after and dealt with and not think you'd left with a dud. Now, let's talk about failed prints. If you've got a resin printer, you've had them. You might have had a lot, you might have not had any. When I first started 3D printing using the Elegoo Mars, it was, I did have failed prints as such from the beginning, as in it was like a tooth was missing. This was because I was supporting the models and that was a learning curve, which you soon learn about underhangs and how to support. The only issue with supporting them yourself is the contact points back then was solid. However, with models now coming supported and the softwares that have been increased in quality, when you put auto supports on and you add a few extras if they're needed, the contact points to the model are next to nothing. So the supports don't annoy me anymore. They used to annoy me a lot, but now the technology is making it a lot simpler for people that don't fully understand what you're doing, because I don't, and I, I have very rarely have failed prints now. A lot of the failed prints is down to me learning new systems, new programs, new, new hardware. But if I was using just a printer all the time, I don't think I'd have as many issues. When you do get a failed print though, it's always good to give them a clean and cure them as if it was a finished model. One for health and safety issues, if you're throwing them away, just make sure they're cleaned and cured um, so anybody handling the waste isn't messing around with uncured products. But also, it's good to have a good closer look at the model to see if there's anything else that's more apparent than the missing head, for example. Now, I've already spoke about the supports and model cleanup, but with the new software and a lot of the companies that I now use offer pre-supported models. And it is, it's not annoying anymore. It's a lot easier than actually assembling models on a sprue, as in you just literally dunk them in warm water and peel them off. The contact points are so fine. And if there is any little bits of scarring, it's just a simple bit of cleanup with a scalpel. Not as bad as it used to be with like a, a couple of mil connection point which used to show up even once cleaned. Now with 
Once you have washed and cleaned them, it is best just to leave them to completely dry. This stops any sort of buildup of white residue before you UV cure it. Now cleaning the resin printers out was the thing that everybody talks about. It was the bit that I absolutely hated and I used to go over the top. I used to clean everything like it was new again. The point is, I don't do this unless I'm not going to use it for a, a long period of time. Because if you're going to refill it back up of resin, there's no point cleaning everything out perfectly, like getting all the resin residue off. Also, repeat exposure to alcohol on the FEP film, it goes cloudy. And if you want to get the most life out of your film, it's best not cleaning it. I don't mean leaving bits of lumps of plastic and everything on it, I just mean don't use alcohol on anything that you don't have to use alcohol on to clean. So for example after this misprint there was a little bit of residue on the bottom of the film. The way that I remove that is just put a small amount of pressure underneath, get it to lift up and then just scrape it off. I check in the resin vat to see if there's any little bits that are floating around and then I scrape out the excess resin and filter it as you normally would. And then it's just as simple as putting it back on your printer, filling it up and getting ready for your next print. No alcohol used, it wasn't that messy and it's just a lot simpler than I used to make it. And I think that's what people do, they tend to go over the top a little bit because it's amenid to you that everything's got to be clean, everything's got to be perfect and it, it just doesn't. The one thing that does have to be perfect though are your tools and your work surface because this resin is not nice to get on your skin so make sure that you wipe everything down with alcohol and then a heavy duty degreaser. With it being soy based it, it takes some getting up um, so just a heavy duty degreaser does really get rid of it and it protects all your stuff and it means that you're not getting it on you without you knowing because uh, it's not that nice so just pay extra attention to your work surfaces and areas. Now the one thing that I didn't ever think I'd ever need is a wash and cure machine. Um, I used to use a nail polish curer and it was enough, but since getting one of these it's so much better and faster. If you haven't got the pocket for it, just get a curer, but a wash and cure machine is a nice tool. Now the failed prints that I got, I always prime them because it's hard to see the details properly unless you're using grey resin which does help. I do like to put some paint on them to see where there's any other fails if I can see any other errors in the print. And on first inspection I couldn't really see anything. Apart from when I really looked there was a, a delamination mark on her mouth giving her a bit of a Chelsea smile which was the same height as this on the backpack. So at that level where it's quite wide it's pulled it off the FEP which means it's like just pulled it off and it's, it's pulled it away from itself and caused a gap which happens when you're doing big prints and it pulls quite quickly. So what I did was is I just went into the software again, I laid out the models, I did the different hag ride in the pig from Loot Studios um, just because I want all the models because they're, they're amazing, look at them. <laughs> and uh, I went in and I just changed the lift speed and what I did is I halved it. This does mean that it's going to double the time of the print but if it means it's successful I'm happy. And the next time that I print a model, I might up it just by one and see if it's still successful. You are constantly playing and learning the settings of a printer, but once you get them dialed in, you get some really successful prints. I'm really happy with these. I could potentially get them a little bit sharper, messing with the exposure, but I'm very happy with the quality of the prints that I'm getting with relatively standard settings. With time you will tweak and you will play. This will cause success, it will cause pain, it will cause all sorts of frustration. But this is the hobby and I'm slowly warming to it. I've done videos where I tell you I hate it and I, I've been very up and down with emotions with 3D printing. And I'm finally at a point where I think that the desktop printers, especially the 4K mono, uh, larger format ones are at a point that I'm very happy with. The last thing I want to talk about is resin 
and I wouldn't say worry about it too much. I just use whatever I've got, whatever I'm sent or whatever I can buy that's the cheapest. You do sometimes have to tweak your printer to suit, but I don't notice that much difference. Apart from water, water washable resin, I hate the stuff. <laughs> but all the normal resins, they're all pretty similar. But anyway guys, thanks for watching, thanks for tuning in, and if you want to support me, check out my shop. If you want to know where I've got the models from, check the links below. <laughs>